Блять, хорошо, что это сундуки от тестов наверху заебись вообще. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to show you how to write process memory inside of our game. Our game today is going to be Minecraft because I, uh, personally, uh, like changing memory in Minecraft because it's pretty, it's pretty difficult, I'm going to be honest. There's not many pointers, and you don't even, you don't even have, you don't even use pointers generally in Minecraft, you make scanners. Uh, but today we're just going to learn how to write and read process memory for beginners. Obviously, and I'd probably go forward in the next videos. So what I made here is I defined this so Windows.h doesn't include too many things uh, that are rare used libraries. It's not going to include them, which is great because uh, we still have write process memory. Um, we have IO stream. This is going to help us uh, print information into the console. So it's going to be very useful to know what our code is doing. And then uh, I did an in in intimate right here. Um, also, I made sure that in project properties. Uh, I, I usually put multi-byte here um, because sometimes it, it gets in the way when it's Unicode. Um, and then C++ language standard, uh, ISO C++ 20, I, I personally use this, or C++ 17. You could use latest, but personally I wouldn't do it. Um, so, anyways, uh, so I have Minecraft right here. And first of all, we're going to need to get the window. So we have a window name, and I would not do that. Um, most people in Minecraft would not do that, and I've done it in CSGO where I didn't do that too. You can also do the same thing. Instead of getting the window name that changes all the time, um, you can actually, uh, in Process Hacker, right, you find the game, so me, it's gonna be Java W, and I go in Miscellaneous Windows, and uh, where there's my Minecraft name, the text, we also have the class, and for us it's LWJGL, and this is almost never gonna change. Except on special clients, obviously, but this here is basically never going to change. So, uh, LWJGL is what we're going to be using today. Um, so, let me show you how to do this. So, first of all, you want to make this um, variable, HWND, H window. You can just do this. A lot of people just do that. Um, and then we're going to do find window. For now, it's very basic. A, find window A. Um, why do you find window A? Uh, because when you do find window, it doesn't really matter, I think. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna redirect to find window A, obviously. Um, so you can do find window or find window A. I, I just like doing find window A because find window just comes back to find window A, which is kind of weird. And we're gonna put the class name here and the window name is just gonna put null. LWJ GL. No. GL. I said it right. Okay, so theoretically, this should find our Minecraft window, and if we do std see out, oh my god, <laughs> I actually pressed tab. Um, okay, and then h w and d, and then here we're gonna return zero to check if we didn't have any compilation errors or anything. Um, Exited, exited with code zero, which is great. Um, so, AO596. Do we have that? AO596. This is our uh, window, basically, handle. But we're going to need to find our process handle. So, first of all, um, from the, the, the window handle like this, what, like this, we can actually get um, the process ID. Um, so... Let's get the process ID. So uh, pro uh, it's get window thread process ID thread. It's right here. Let's just click that. And in here we have the HWND. So HWND. And then here we have the IPDW process ID. And we're actually going to make a variable right here. Because this is, it says LP something, and LP is actually a pointer, so it's going to write into the value. So we're just going to do that, because we're just going to do a D word, like this, um, process ID. And we're actually going to define it as zero. Uh, it, zero is actually the same thing as null, if you didn't know, which is kind of stupid. It's funny. Like, look, define null zero. It's just some, I don't know. 
So just do zero, honestly. I prefer like this. Um, there you go. Now you can use null. It's, it might be more clear for you, but it's like using zero. Uh, so now that this is done, very cool. Uh, we got our process ID. So this should be our process ID. So we can actually check that in task manager. So Java W6524 is our process ID. So SAD, see out. And by the way, get used to uh, printing out information to be sure that it's correct. Now you don't need to do that all the time. 6524, you don't need to do that all the time. Yeah, it's correct. You don't need to do that all the time, but for debugging, it's very useful. I I mean, if the, there's a bug or something that is not working properly, printing out information is very awesome, so. Yeah. Or you could put breakpoints, but it's only in debug, so. Like you have to do debug, I think. I think that's how you do it. You put debug, now I can put breakpoints like right here. Cool, if I put release. Oh, I can still do it. I don't know, I don't know how it works. All right. Okay, so now that we got our process ID, um, let's actually get our, our handle. And our handle is gonna write. So let me explain what, what we're doing right now. The function we wanna use is let me write it read process memory okay and here i i'm pretty sure you guys can't see because it's so small i'm going to zoom on it in editing we have our h process which is what we're looking for after all of this this is all of this is being done just to get our h process so we need the p handle but it's going to be the same thing it's going to be placed right in the first one um, the ne next thing is our address. So we're gonna have to cast it in an LPC void. So first of all, we're gonna put we're gonna put this, and then our um, I don't know our address. Um, I pr I like doing uh, I don't know D word D word, which is an unsigned long, by the way. Um, if you guys wanted to know that um, address, and let's say it's zero x this for example um we're gonna have to cast it in the lpc void or lp void i don't know lpc void lp lp void actually works fine so i don't know what, what i don't know what the hell and then after we're gonna have to put our buffer and what's a buffer buffer is an basically um a chunk of information stored in memory i think that's what we call it I don't know. Um, so our buffer is basically what the information we'd want to receive. So um, it's going to write into it just like the process ID. So it's going to be a pointer. That's for sure. And then we're going to have to specify the size. And for example, I'm going to, for example, I'm going to do something very simple. Imagine we're trying to get multiple values, right? Um, I do struct uh, myself. Okay, why well, did it did it automatically. Um, I'd call it, I don't know. Imagine you're getting your chords. Um, and then you had three values. Int, uh, no. Float, X, Y, and Z. So you can do this. And you can actually do this with um, even arrays. So we make, um, for example, int array of the size of nine. Uh, or we could do a float array actually size of three We can call it chords I'll call it FL chords um, I don't know like something like this it's gonna have three values in it and we can actually specify the size so at FL chords zero like this all right, um, so it's gonna write from here and then it's the size of FL, FL chords. And then the last thing is really use useless, so I'm just gonna do a null pointer. Okay, so what we did right here is we, spec we specified what we wanted to write into. So it's gonna write from here to the end. Uh, so FL chords. 
So technically, this should fill my whole uh, uh, my whole thing in floats. So a float is actually four bytes. So technically, it should be three times four, which is twelve. Wow, math. Cool. <laughs> and it should be the same thing for this one, except this one is uh, a structure. And I prefer using structures for stuff like this because you can just do an. Uh, I guess this is an object technically. All right. I, I'll call it an object anyways. And then then you can do dot x dot y dot z. It's very more organized. So I honestly I'm not going to use FL chords. I'm just going to use chords like this. Chords. Um. Chord. Do something like this. You know. I don't know. Key like this and then FL chords there we go so it's gonna fill up everything so technically in memory let's actually use um, I'm going to be using cheat engine for this and I'm gonna show you how uh, it's gonna work in, in in a memory viewer All right so imagine we want to um, now I don't even know if this is a valid address so that's why um, I'm kind of See, it's not even a valid address. So when you do this, uh, I'd rather um, actually look for an actual existing address. So we're gonna look for a four. Uh, oh, and we obviously look for float. Okay, so we have this perfect four right here, which is awesome. Uh, we're gonna do display type float so you can just can better better visualize. So uh, I I will zoom this in 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 post. I guess um, I'll zoom this. So basically, see, we have this four, and if we were to write at this, this is the address right here. This is the, I hope this makes sense, guys. Um, so the address is uh, 6D9, whatever. Let's write it right here, actually. And actually, uh, I, I actually forgot to do the process handle. We'll do that later. Um, basically, what this is going to do is that it's going to do in the um in the x one it's going to fill it with four the y one it's going to fill it with zero and the z one is going to be filled with zero and we can actually check this so let me actually get the the process handle right here so to get the process handle we need to do open process and then i'd, I'd fill this with open oh no no, no. process all access there it is it's right here and then false because uh, this is a bool and then this um this you're gonna you're just gonna put your process id right here i think okay very nice so now that we've done everything let's print out everything and it's gonna it's gonna read at this address and it should fill my chords with um x should be um four. Oh, by the way this is just a random name just forget about whatever I put X is gonna be four this Y is gonna be zero Z is gonna be zero technically that should be it so let's check it let's check this crap out all right so we seem to have an issue where it doesn't write and I think it's just because it's zero I'm gonna do something else like right here here good um, I don't know there's there's a 13 27 13 39 13 whatever and they're like in they're like following each other, and I don't know why. Well, it's interesting in the characters that what I'm seeing here, but let's just do that instead and put this address. Thirteen point two, thirteen point three nine, and thirteen point zero two. Okay, that's pretty correct. I mean, this is rounded, obviously, but if I were to go whatever, it'd be accurate. But this seems to be very correct. Um, let's, uh, you can actually, I'll zoom in. Yeah, that's very nice. So, if you guys wanted to know how to do that, that's how you do it, all right? And um, so this is, I told you how to do it like this because you could just do a, a float, right? And do X and then people would do reprocess memory three times and that's stupid, all right? You're just doing reprocess memory three times, X. X. Sure, this would work very well. Um, I mean, our X is gonna be correct. Uh, it's gonna be 13 point whatever, but then you're gonna have to copy reprocess memory 50 times and that's stupid. So just doing one reprocess memory is very cool. Um, 
and uh, you can write process memory and this is actually very simple um, so if you want to write you do this equals to like if you want to write to 3.4 for example let's write it to 3.4 okay this is very nice except now you want to do write and now it should write completely to the value look at this it's 3.4 <laughs> that's very cool so if you guys wanted to know how to do that that's easy I mean, there's nothing really that hard that we have done today um, and I probably didn't explain myself very well um, but I hope you guys really understood how you could actually use write process memory correctly and you know maybe you had a better insight on how to do this and maybe in the next video I'll show you how to make a scanner that um, actually works on Lunar I've made a github where I've put one but forget about that one it, it was very stupid and if you want to um, I mean I, I offer a lot of people calls so I, they can just understand um, because why the hell not and yeah I hope you guys like this video I mean this is very badly explained but it was, I guess that was pretty good for beginners. How do you read, write, uh, write process memory and read process memory optimally? That's a way to do it. All right. So if you want to write process memory multiple times, uh, multiple times, at, if you want to write process memory correctly multiple times, uh, with only one write process memory, it's very possible, and you can do that with arrays. So you could write like a thousand values at the same time or read them at the same time. So that's very nice because. People, I've seen, uh, you'll see when I make a video on the scanners, uh, people just loop the right process memory and you can just use it once, which is, you know, a little bit stupid. I'm, I'm going to be honest, a little bit stupid. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'll see you guys later. Um, and yeah.